is in front of us. Probably a gasoline truck for all I know. It's got some kind of generator on it. Who knows, it might be for welding or something. I don't know, but he's just motoring along. They got a lot of things like this on scooters here. Rather than having some big utility truck, they got these little small electric carts and they send guys around on them and they get done what they need to get done, I guess. So yeah, you could see there's probably as many bicycles or at least maybe a little less bicycles versus cars on the roadway, but they're in a separated lane. The, the bike, the cars are out there, the bikes are over here. Now the scooters are over here too, so, and it doesn't seem to matter what side of the street you're on. Here's a perfect example. You got two scooters going, you know, some and upstream, just completely the wrong way. Um, and and it doesn't seem to phase anybody that they do that. So it's uh, not a cool thing to lose your cool in public. So you're just supposed to kind of deal with it and move along. So yeah, man, that's that's riding in Beijing right there. We've been doing it all day. Um, other than the stop at the Confucian Temple, this is this is how we've been getting around today is on bike. So. This is probably a little dangerous for me. I'm doing this one-handed at this point. Um, probably not the wisest choice. And you can see how when the buses are out here, they push you out into kind of traffic. But the traffic realizes that and they just kind of, uh, they kind of give way a little bit. See, most of the traffic will travel in those outer lanes. They kind of stay out of this yellow lane. I think that's supposed to be a bus-only lane. But of course, the scooters don't care. They'll, they'll do whatever they want. The scooters seem to violate all the traffic rules. They do whatever they want, whenever they want. And so do the bikes, to be honest with you. So it's been an interesting experience, but bike is definitely a viable means of transportation in Beijing. Um, my preferred way of getting around, I gotta tell you, because I'd rather get around by bike, stop where I want, do what I want, when I want, just lock the bike up, uh, you know, go get some lunch, do whatever, go see one of the sites, lock the bike up no big deal um real easy navigation could be easier but we don't have cell service here so we're doing everything by map old school way and mary gets stuck doing most of that to be honest with you so um yeah but this is definitely a viable way of of transportation see that girl just dinging me up and flying right by me right she just uh, hit me with the dinger and she's look at her tires all lopsided doesn't matter they just stoke here man um, probably one of the reasons why they're in probably generally better shape as a population than we are because they walk a lot of places and they ride bikes everywhere um, you don't see a lot a lot of overweight Chinese people I mean you do see some don't get me wrong but their older people are generally in far better health they're all very mobile and moving around you know doing Tai Chi in the park and whatnot um, see this this is what happens you get people walking across and all the bikes still keep going the bikes don't seem to care about the lights or anything else just like I did and and that's that's the way the flow works here it doesn't seem to make a difference this is a bus stop here on our right yeah Yeah, you can see the bike. The bike symbol's a little different. But this is just, theirs is just a bike. Um, ours is a, you know, a bike with a person on it, whatever. Theirs is just a bicycle. It's a bicycle lane. See there, there's the bike box right there, bike lane, right? And these people uh, with these little flags, those are tour guides normally, and you'll see a whole bunch of people standing around near where the tour guides are because they come to see some temple or the Forbidden City or something else. I think that's Beihai Park out there. Um, so, yeah, they would have come to see that. Oh, there's an ambulance. So, anyway. Um, yeah, little signs, the police are your friend, that kind of thing. They do a lot of that kind of uh, public service advertising in very cartoony fashion here um, to a Chinese person that has grown up in this culture 
the cartoony ones that look like they could be teenagers to us, they know that they're adults. So when you see the police in these advertisements and they look cartoony and almost like a child or maybe a teenager, they're actually supposed to signify adults. And the children really do look much younger like children. You see these scooters are everywhere, right? There's a restaurant there, Otto's restaurant. So, yeah, man, this, this, is, this is what it's like to bike around in Beijing. Somebody just lit me up from the back, but I don't know why. Somebody's walking here, so let's see if we can get through. And they don't care. They don't care if you're, you know, they just don't care. It's, it's a, you know, they're like, hey, I'm walking. You got places to be. I got places to be. And there's a lady that was lighting me up. Everybody's got some place to be and nobody cares. So, yeah, it's interesting. We're going to stop at this scooter place because I think Mary wants to check out a scooter. So, we were hearing that you could get a scooter for 700 US and have it shipped for another 100. So, Mary's going to go in there and check it out and see if she can get herself a scooter to take her butt to work. So, anyway, yeah, that's all for now and we'll see you on the flip side.